All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Heroes Connect Military to Manufacturing event. My name is Katie Bowerman, and I'm a Senior Program Manager with the Manufacturing Institute. I oversee two of the Heroes Make America virtual military skill bridge training programs that we offer, as well as moderate our virtual events like these. So we do have a large group with us here today. So whether you're a seasoned Heroes Connect attendee or new to the show, we are happy to have you spending the next hour with us. So we start these events to help open our military population's eyes to the manufacturing and supply chain industry. Oftentimes, our companies go unnoticed simply because folks don't understand just how dynamic manufacturing is and how well our service members, veterans, military spouses, how your talents are aligned with positions in these companies. So we just don't know what we don't know, right? So we're hoping to change that a little bit each time we do these events. So, all right, let's get to know who we are here talking with today. They are a very well-known brand name. Uh, I guarantee you know them, but may not know all the different business segments under their big umbrella. So who is that you are wondering? As you can see here, we're featuring one of our Heroes Make America supporting companies, healthcare industry giant Johnson & Johnson. So let's do some housekeeping items before we go ahead and get started. So these events are being recorded and will be sent out as a recap email after the event. Please be sure you stay muted because we want to make sure that we minimize any background noise. However, even though your mics are muted, I still encourage you, be an active participant. Utilize that chat feature during the presentation to drop in any questions that you have, and then we'll hold off answering those questions till the end, um, and where I'll come in, I'll read off your questions during the Q&A session. So really, events like this, they're, they're your opportunity to join the discussion and ask questions of these industry leaders who you may not normally have access to. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's utilize that chat box. If you want to pull it on up, drop in where you're going to be job searching. Okay. So while you're doing that, uh, I do want to briefly highlight the Manufacturing Institute's Heroes Make America Military Skill Bridge Program. So we have many of our students on the call, but we have other folks, um, military affiliated participants, company reps, community partners from across the country who are joining us today. So if you don't know who we are, Heroes Make America is a DOD approved skill bridge program. So we have trainings for uh, transitioning service members, veterans, reservists, National Guardsmen, military spouses, and we provide a variety of certification trainings equipping you for rewarding careers in manufacturing and supply chain. So our students learn all kinds of things like safety, quality practices, technical trainings, like electrical, mechanical, pneumatic training. Uh, and then of course, we also have our logistics, logistics and warehouse distribution training. So here are our program managers and the trainings we offer as well as our upcoming class dates. We will drop our contact information in the chat so you'll be able to connect with any one of us. But if you have any questions, heroes at nam.org is our email address. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to watch a video first, and then I will bring on our featured speaker. So give me one second. Let's get that video rolling. For over 130 years, Johnson & Johnson has been dedicated to improving accessibility and creating healthier, happier communities. The veteran employees know this is more than just a job. It's the ability to continue their commitment to serving people. What started with only 14 people in 1886 is now a company we rely on for health and beauty products, orthopedics, vaccines, and so much more. Headquartered in central New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson is one of the largest manufacturers of healthcare, med tech, and pharmaceutical products. In a world where innovation breeds success, veterans can bring their unique experiences and strengths to change the trajectory of health for humanity. Johnson & Johnson was established in 1886 with just 14 employees, eight women, and six men. We now have over 134,000 employees and represented in over 60 countries with over 260 operating companies under the J&J &J brand. Well, it is a very diverse healthcare company, so the opportunities, the career paths are, in my opinion, endless. Everything from manufacturing, supply chain, research and development, as well as sales and marketing opportunities. I uh, served 20 years in the Navy. I was a nuclear electronic technician, where basically I ran nuclear power plants on board submarines and aircraft carriers. You know, most of us who serve, we serve, we have a straight direction of what we knew. We know the mission, we're after the mission. Now when you transition to the civilian sector, you're doing something for you. 
I didn't anticipate coming into this role. It didn't fall on my lap either, but I did my research, looked into it, and I realized, wow, this is exactly what I want to do. This is exactly the field in which I was taught. Uh, what interests me is the challenge, you know, being uh, an engineering technician, making contact lenses, running fully automated machines, utilizing the skills that I learned in the Navy, dealing with servos, PLCs, hydraulic systems, uh, which is a challenge that I, I thought that fit what I was looking for. I joined the Air Force originally, I just wanted to be part-time. And uh, it was just an added benefit to something I've always wanted to do, kind of serve a greater purpose. I think my biggest takeaway from the military is paying attention to detail. Attention to detail is so important in anything you do and in the workplace is especially important. My current role at Johnson & Johnson is I'm an IDS2. It's an infectious disease specialist and I'm in the HIV division. We meet with providers and just educate them on the pharmaceutical drug that we sell. So I knew nothing about pharmaceutical sales. I had no experience and this company has really sparked that that energy and motivation to be passionate about what I do, and that's helping patients. For Johnson & Johnson, veterans are purpose-driven and values-based leaders, and that's just like leaders at Johnson & Johnson. We have a tremendous number of programs available to veterans. The first thing is we always have hundreds of available open positions across Johnson & Johnson in the United States, and they can range anywhere from commercial and sales roles to supply chain and logistics to business roles like human resources or finance or IT. Uh, but we also have a number of very dedicated veteran-specific pathways into Johnson & Johnson. One of the reasons service members serve is we want to feel that uh, we're serving for a purpose. And similarly, at Johnson & Johnson, our credo uh, tells us that we need to serve those who need us first, serve the people that we serve first. And service members you know, find that our credo emulates the same principles that we look for when we serve in the first place. Making the transition to Johnson & Johnson has been the best decision that I've made. I truly believe that this is my home and I really do encourage others to find their home. Are you ready for a commitment to serve and better the health of all communities? Visit their website, careers.jnj.com slash veterans. All right, so now we're going to bring on Ebony Howard. I'm going to pass the show over to you. Laura, is all yours. Hi, everyone. I'm Ebony Howard. Um, I always love to say, first of all, um, thank you for the opportunity to come speak to uh, my fellow veterans or military-connected individuals. Um, so I'm super excited about this opportunity. I'll start off by telling you a little bit about myself. I've been with Johnson & Johnson for um, three years, made March. So I started off as an executive assistant to the VP of Service and Delivery here in Tampa, Florida. Um, and I'll tell my story. I'm very proud of my story as far as when I when I initially separated or retired from the military, I didn't have a four-year degree. I think that's very important to know, especially for um, the military-connected community as well, and veterans, because that is not an endpoint, right? So I came into Johnson & Johnson. Um, I always say they took a chance on me because I had all of this experience, 23 years in the Air Force. Um, and what am I supposed to do with that? So I started off as an EA in Johnson & Johnson. While I was there, the support system, the motivation to continue my education. So I got my degree in human resource management and moved over to talent acquisition. So I started in talent acquisition sourcing for what used to be our pharma, pharma sector, which is now innovative medicine. Um, I'll tell you, it was definitely a challenge, a learning curve. I had no clue about anything dealing with pharmaceuticals, um, but I learned. And from there, the role came open to help source for military connected community, military community connected talent, um, which is why I'm here today. So now I source for uh, specific roles and speak at events like this to help 
get brand awareness about Johnson & Johnson to our military connected community. Um, so starting off, like I said, I served 23 years in the Air Force, got out or retired in 2020 and moved directly to Johnson & Johnson. So I'm here to talk about not only what our um, veteran pathways are into Johnson & Johnson, but also to give you a little insight on whatever questions you have um, regarding transitioning or even if you've been out for a while or if you are a military spouse, um, things that can help you in your career search or um, boost your availability to different companies and exposure to different companies, um, particularly Johnson & Johnson. So <laughs> Um, so with that being said, we'll get started on the slideshow. Thank you. So our foundation, as you saw in that video, I love that video. I think it gives a very accurate um, depiction of what Johnson & Johnson is about, as well as how they are connected and support the veteran community. Um, but I always say, what makes Johnson & Johnson so attractive to veterans? And I have to say, it's our credo, right? When we're in the service, we have a sense of purpose. We're serving and we're helping people that are, you know, or communities, or, you know, whether it's supportive operations or deploying, we're helping those worldwide. And that is the same thing that Johnson & Johnson does. But our root, we are rooted deeply within our credo. And the cool part about it is every service has, whether it is the Airman's Creed from the Air Force or the NCO Creed or the motto, our mission, our vision, what is it that we do? Why do we do it? And how do we do it? Right. And Johnson & Johnson spells it out perfectly in the credo as far as we put our people first, our customers, our employees, um, they are our priority. And that creates a culture um, that makes it, again, exciting for veterans and just exciting to be a part of that company in itself. Next slide, please. And we are a global company. We have over 152,000 employees. We are located in 60 countries and we have 260 plus sub companies. Um, so what that means is again, we acquire um, different companies, um, our products, all of that good stuff. Next slide, please. And this slide is a little uh, dated. We're still in the process of updating. Um, as you can see, yes, we do um, have Again, what is now our two main focus sectors, innovative medicine and med tech. So we renamed pharmaceutical to innovative medicine to encompass everything because we're creating new cure solutions for the world. Next slide, please. And again, a lot of times, you know, people are used to Johnson & Johnson and baby products, right? That's all they know, but it's a whole entire different world. We've separated from consumer. It is now called ChemView, and we focus specifically on innovative medicine and med tech or med devices. Next slide. And again, what makes Johnson & Johnson so desirable for veterans? Um, we capitalize on those transferable skills that we learn in the military. And even, again, military-connected community, um, I think there's a certain, there's resilience across the board, right? Because as we serve, we have to be able to um, pick up go, do, move families, whatever it might be. Um, and that, again, is a skill or something that you learn, that you adapt to, that's not easily, um, everyone can't say they have that. Most people stay in an area for, you know, that's where they grew up, right? As military, we learn to travel. We learn to pick up, adapt, overcome as we go from place to place. I always laugh and joke. Um, and I tell people, I've never, this is the longest since I've been retired that I've been in one location. And it's been seven years um, because I got to Florida in 2016. But normally I'm moving my family every two to three years. Um, so we do have that resilience with us. Um, emotional intelligence, military breeds leaders. That's what we're there for. That's what we do. And of course, the curiosity. How can we make 
whatever it is that we're doing better. We ask the hard questions why. We're not afraid to um, dig deep and find out whatever that root cause might be. And Johnson & Johnson really capitalizes on that. And as I said, we have a strong connection to the military connected community. Um, we have been around since the Spanish American War as far as the support that we provided. We also have an award winning, um, we've received awards best in class throughout multiple different organizations. Um, one thing that I definitely am proud about is our VLC. So we have a network, an ERG group, employee resource group that is full of veterans. That is the requirement. Um, um, you are a veteran or you support veterans, right? So you have this large community that is wherever you are in either in any of our locations, um, you have someone that has traveled this same path as you, that is like-minded, that understands what you have been through in the military and how do you transition into corporate America. So the mentorship is there. And then we also like to engage and partner with various organizations like Heroes Make America, um, Wounded Warrior Project. We also support uh, 50 Strong and we also do um, have a skill bridge program as well. Next slide, please. And now we'll get into our military connected um, opportunities, which we call our pathways into J and J. So I'm going to highlight these four because they are veteran specific, but I do want you to keep in mind that this is not the only way to um, become employed with Johnson & Johnson. I was a direct hire, so I didn't necessarily use any of the pathways. Um, so we'll go through each pathway. I think if we go to the next slide, we can start talking about the different pathways. So of course we have our skill bridge program. Um, again, 180 days prior to your date of separation, you are able to participate in the skill bridge program. We like to call it an internship to hire. Um, you can seek employment at the locations that are listed on the screen. It is very specific. Now, yes, in the US, we do have more locations than what is listed at the bottom of the screen, but those locations are conducive to SkillBridge because they um, allow, they we have a headquarters there or an actual office. Like for instance, I'm in Tampa, and in Tampa, we have support functions primarily. So you'll see a lot of HR or protocol. Um, if you go to Jacksonville, that is huge. That's where we produce, manufacture, um, and use our supply chain with logistics and transportation for AccuView contact lenses. So a lot of the locations will um, are specific to job functions. So that's our skill bridge. You can enter our skill bridge or apply for our skill bridge two, two different ways. One, we do a partnership with, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm at a loss right now. Corporate, hire our heroes corporate, I think if I'm not mistaken, I feel like that's what it is. So we do a partnership with them, but you can also apply to skill bridge directly through J and J by emailing that um, address at the bottom of the screen, J and J Skillbridge at its.jnj.com. Next slide, please. This is a very interesting one. In one that most people don't even consider is our veteran sales pathway. You need zero sales experience. Um, we bring you on, they teach you everything that you need to know about your specific therapeutic area, and then they release you to go sell. But it's not like your normal, like used cars, car, used car men sell. It is, um, again, you are, if you are looking to have a huge impact, this is one of the ways that you can do it because you are working directly with the customer. So if you are selling a specific med tech device, you are the one that learn, you learn about it. You um, are able to show, demonstrate how to use it. If doctors have questions, you are the one that they call. So you can immediately see your impact for what you're doing for um, within the within the veteran sales pathway. Next slide, please. 
And then we have our two leadership development programs. Right now, this one is showing our military veteran leadership development program. And this one is based off of um, the minimum requirements. It is a 18 month program. It is six or three six month rotations where you get to learn about the business. So what's really cool about this program is it capitalizes on those, again, transferable skills that you learned in the military, leadership, people management, um, critical thinking, and it uses that and you are allowed to go to multiple or um, different sectors, different functions, and it could be either project management or um, working with others to solve, you know, a specific problem, but they utilize your skills and you are able to work cross-functionally. So then what you're developing is more so your business acumen to see where do I fit? What is the best place for me within Johnson & Johnson? So I always say it's a try before you buy, right? You don't know exactly what you're walking into, but you're able to see where can I best utilize all of the skills that I've learned over the years. Next slide, please. And then we have our experience military veteran leadership development program, same concept. The difference is the requirements. So what happens for this one is you have to have served a minimum of 20 years and reached the rank of E8, W4, or O4, O5, O5 or above. Um, in less than two years, re transition from active duty or guard or reserve. Um, and again, the same concept with the program. It is an 18 month program. Um, instead of three rotations, you focus in on two rotations. Um, and it again utilizes those skills. What's really cool again about these programs are is this isn't your typical leadership development program. It's not an internship. You are coming on as a full-time employee with employment after you complete your rotation. Next slide, please. And last but not least, like I said, we have our pathways for coming into J&J &J that are veteran specific, but we also have where the majority of our hires come from direct hire. So that just means you went out to the website, you searched, you found a specific job and you applied. And that is where my primary role comes into play. So we all know that you know, once you apply for a job, you can get lost in the sauce, as they say. It might be 300 and something applicants for that one job. So what I normally do is I connect, and I think they put my information in the chat. Um, you can set up a 30-minute career discussion with me, and you... I ask prior to that you go out to the website, especially if it is based off of direct hire. You do your research as far as what you're interested in. And then what we do is um, I connect with you. We talk about your qualifications. We try to see other opportunities that might be a good fit if you have it, if you weren't able to find anything on the website. And then I kind of act as a liaison between you and the recruiter. So I, I always preference, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will get the job, but it gives you a good chance because now they can put um, a name with, or a name and a face with the applicant. And I always say, hey, I vetted this talent. They're really good. Um, they'll be a really good fit for your job. So it just kind of gives them a quick overview versus looking through those, all of the applicants that apply for that job. Um, and I think there might be okay two things with this slide we have our global talent hub um and again it's a website that was dropped in the chat the careers that j and j slash military if i'm not mistaken that was dropped in the site you can get to our career hub from there why is the career hub important the Career Hub allows you to sign up, put your information in our database that we use for sourcing. Um, that's number one. But two, it also allows you to tell your interests. So anytime a new job becomes open or comes open, um, you'll get notified. So you definitely, it allows you to not have to search the actual website daily. But if you say, hey, I'm interested in HR positions in 
Jacksonville, Florida. Anytime any of those positions become available on our website, you'll automatically get an email to say, hey, this position just opened, go ahead and apply. Um, the other thing that's important is when you go to the backslash military website, we have a tool or a function on or a um, program on there that it allows you to put in, say you don't know exactly where you'll fit in, right? You've been doing this for so long that you're like, oh my goodness, you know, this isn't something that necessarily transfers uh, or I don't know what it transfers to, right? Um, you can go to this web, our website is called Offline and it's, a, it's actually, I think it's listed as Skills Translator. So you go there, you can click on whether you're a veteran, a spouse, or a veteran, a student veteran, and you put in all of your information. It asks for your MOS or AFSC if you're Air Force, and it translates, it gives you a list of all our available opens, openings or jobs that correlate to your experience. So I think that's very helpful. Um, because again, where do you fit in? What is it that I do, especially if you do a job that doesn't necessarily, again, translate well on the outside? And I think that is the last slide. Yes, it is. So I will open it up for questions, I think, Katie. <laughs> yep, yep, I have a couple that have come through already. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't mind, I'm going to uh, probably click through a back. Back through a couple slides as the questions come in. Uh, but the first one was in regards to the um, the more seasoned leadership program, um, mm -hmm. but probably for both, I guess, uh, what are the locations for those? Because you said there's rotations, so are they having to move? And I guess kind of give them an idea of that. Yes, um, good question. So that the, both of those programs are located, they do require you to relocate to the New Jersey or Pennsylvania area. That is because that is one of the areas, again, that New Jersey is where our headquarters is located, but that also allows you to get the cross-functional experience. Um, so we have marketing, we have sales, we have HR, everything is kind of co-located in that area. So they do ask that you relocate to um, the New Jersey Jersey or Pennsylvania area just for the ease of rotations. Um, and I do want to say, uh, I'll expand a little bit on those programs. So right now, um, the program is only open once a year. Our application process opens in January. So we're actually now in the process of screening all of the applicants for our 2024 cohort. Um, so it opens in January. It is a very, it is a highly competitive program. Um, so I also can give tips on resumes as far as making sure you include all of your experience. A lot of times we have um, served in the military for an extended period of time. So we try to blanket a certain amount of years into one area. No, they want to see your leadership experience. You definitely want to make sure that you're highlighting and showing career progression. Um, so those are what those are some of the things that we use when looking um, at the applicants for that specific program. But yes, they they do require you to relocate to New Jersey, Pennsylvania. After the rotation, you can go wherever you would like. I think most. From what I've seen in the program, most individuals tend to stay in the New Jersey area, but wherever a job opening is, um, you are able to transfer. Perfect. Thank you for clarifying another one regarding those programs, um, because it said recently transitioned, I believe, for the regular leadership development less than four years and then the um, experienced one less than two years. Is there any flexibility in how long since separation or what if they've been out for more than that? They are pretty um, steadfast on the requirements when they give the numbers for the years of transitioning, that transition period. The program is truly intended, if you think about it, um, I, I like to explain why they stick with um, those years as far as transitioning, because the program is truly intended for um, veterans that are trying to figure out where they fit in corporate America. So it allows you to get experience because it doesn't, 
you have to have a degree, but it doesn't matter what your degree is in because they're capitalizing on your leadership abilities, your critical thinking skills, your people management. So it's more about finding where you fit in J and J versus I'm um, coming with this um, specific skill set in finance or in marketing. Thank you for clarifying those two questions. Um, I have some additional ones, but I will put a plug for my participants. Make sure you're dropping in your questions. I'll keep on asking them, but as you guys roll in your questions in the chat, I'll go ahead and read them off. So another one that I have, because you had shared your bookings page for them to talk with you one-on-one, -on -one, um, you gave some advice of looking up jobs ahead of time. Is there anything else you'd like for them to prepare uh, before that meeting to really capitalize on their 30 minutes with you? I would just say um, definitely look up the jobs prior to. Now, if you don't know, when you go to our career site, like I said, you have different options. You can go to the military site and you can use the skills translator and find jobs that translate to your skill. But what if you're getting out and you're like, I never want to do that again. I did it for however many years. I'm ready for a pivot. What else is available to me? If you go to our normal careers.jmj page, you can type in, you know, you can type in everything, any type of search um, criteria, anything from, well, I just got my PMP. So you can type in your product type in project management certificate um, and see what comes up. If you're big in IT, you can type in, you know, coding and see what comes up. Um, I just say come prepared with something so that we can focus our discussion versus using the entire 30 minutes for me to search. Now I will do it. I, I don't take away from that. I will definitely um, help if you, you know, to refine or see, you can tell me what you're interested in and then I can see what's out there. You can also search by location because that's huge. If you are willing to relocate or you're like, you know, nope, I'm in Texas, but I can move anywhere because I'm just ready to leave Texas or whatever. And then um, you can definitely search by location. You can search remote work. And I will be honest, as of right now, we don't have a lot of remote opportunities, but there are some out there. Or, you know, like I said, you can do location, you can do job function, anything. But um, that's what I would ask for you to do prior to um, coming to that 30 minute meeting. Perfect. And to tag on one more question of that, because I'm sure you get this a lot in those meetings, is what is an average timeline, right, for like application to hire? So how early should these folks be applying to the jobs based on their, you know, transition window? Yes. So that is a that's a, that is a very hard question to answer because sometimes it really depends on the hiring manager. Um, but I say search, right? If you're within 60 to 90 days, because I will say from time to offer to time to start is normally at a minimum 30 days because you have to do your background. Also keep in mind that if you're transitioning, once you're on terminal leave, if I'm not mistaken, you're able to secure full-time employment. So I would say just back it up maybe about 30 to 60 days to give you an idea of what's out there. But I don't don't hold me to that time frame because again, it depends on the hiring manager, the rec, how long has the rec been open? Um, it's a lot of factors in that, but definitely start searching just to see what's what you're interested in. Perfect, thank you. Um... I think that'll answer a lot of the questions, right? It'll save you a little bit of time in those 30 minutes <laughs> in those phone calls. Um, we had talked about the leadership training program specifically, right? If folks want to go into those training programs, um, but what about, you know, direct hires? Do folks, are they able to get into leadership positions or is it really like a hire from within kind of situation with J&J? No, that is one thing that I love about J&J. You can, we have positions that range from, a specialist or an analyst all the way up to VP. So you just have to make sure that you are looking at the job requirements and making sure that your resume um, focuses in on whatever they are requiring. So if they're looking for however many years of experience, make sure that's highlighted in the resume. Show that you are meeting all of the required functions because there's a difference between required and preferred. 
So yes, the preferred is nice to have, but at least meet those requirements. And yes, you can hire for all levels of um, employment. Perfect. And then I had a question here. I think you had covered it, but maybe... Um... We can review it again. So when you are in one of those leadership programs, you're considered a full-time employee, right? Yes. So that is one reason why, and, and I love this. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get so excited about J&J. &J. Um, if you could tell, I love the company. I don't say that just because I am um, a, a talent sourcer, but I truly enjoy working for J&J. &J. Um, the culture is awesome. But Back to the program. So yes, with those two leadership development programs, it is extremely competitive because you're coming in at the MVLDP, you're coming in at the manager level. So you're doing, you know, it's not asking for industry experience. Again, capitalizing on your leadership. They'll teach you the business side of the house. They're already looking at you for M1s, managers. Um, and the EMVLDP experience, you're coming at the director level. Um, so again, different opportunities, but yes, they are. They're really good opportunities. Perfect. I appreciate you um, clarifying that. I do want to talk a little bit about maybe locations, and this is probably going to be a, <laughs> we're going to have to talk through a couple different things, but um, for the manufacturing sites, I know there's some big hubs. I know Jacksonville has the contact lenses. Um, can you talk about maybe some of the other locations for the manufacturing sites themselves? Yes, yeah, so we have a huge one in San Angelo, Texas, um, that is really big. We also have uh, manufacturing sites in Athens, Georgia, and we do have a couple in the Pennsylvania area. Um, that's where we see most of our supply chain jobs when it comes to whether it is manufacturing, in manufacturing engineer, um, transportation, logistics, all of that stuff. Those are our major hubs. Perfect. Um, let's see. A couple other uh, questions in there, because um, I guess my other question was really display chain, but you had mentioned that, that they're really tied to the manufacturing sites, right? Um, and then all the other locations you see on J&J's page, are those more the business functions? Can you talk about maybe other opportunities outside of manufacturing and supply chain? Yes. Yeah, so again, continental U.S. is huge. Um, so pretty much anywhere. So my suggestion would be to... Um, type in, like go to the search page, type in the location, and you can see what job functions are uh, really prevalent in that area. Like for instance, outside of the manufacturing in San Angelo, Texas, Texas is huge for sales. A lot of our sales representatives are located in Dallas or Austin, places like that. Again, when you get to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, you're gonna have all functions. So marketing, HR, payroll, procurement, IT, anything you can think of will be in that hub. We also have locations in Cincinnati, which is, if I'm not mistaken, our med tech. So a lot of med device um, operations are there. Yes, Jacksonville, again, contact lenses, so huge on manufacturing. Tampa is a support function. So um, again, HR, so from total rewards, which is our benefits and compensation packages, to payroll, procurement, IT as well. Um, and then ERLR, our employee relations, labor relations, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, TA, we're there as well. So our talent acquisition team, um, what else do we have? Total rewards, ERLR, talent acquisitions. Oh, and our last but not least, which falls under um, HR is our people's experience. So if you're good with, you know, Salesforce or um, working behind the scenes with data analytics, and data analytics, then that's an area of opportunity for you as well. I hope that answered. I think I did. <laughs> yep. And I guess bottom line is there's, a place for everyone. Yeah, there's it's such a giant company, right? There's all different types of roles and supporting mm -hmm. functions. Um, whether you want to go manufacturing, supply chain, or any of the other business functions, there's opportunity. Yes, there is. Perfect. Let's see. I see um, a hand up from our Fort Stewart classroom. You want to come on and ask that question? 
Um, yeah, I had a question. I saw that a lot of your positions, you had a minimum requirement as a bachelor's degree, but is there a way to come into the company starting off at a lower level and then um, getting some of those positions without still having a bachelor's degree? Yes, that is a good question. Like I, I came in, I did not have my bachelor's degree. I came in as an EA, um, but we also have what would if I'm not mistaken, we call it wage, where it is mostly manufacturing, um, supply chain, um, engineering, that kind of thing. It's just you'll it's a specific way that you have to search for that. But yes, there are opportunities to come in and um, where you don't necessarily need a degree. And that is a lot of our supply chain manufacturing roles. Um, Athens, Georgia. Again, there's a couple in um, Malvern. Not quite sure where that is, though. <laughs> but yes, there are other opportunities there. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Uh, we've got some interest, like sales. Okay, you said there are some in Texas and the Dallas Austin. Is it more by region? You know, what it, what if folks are not willing to relocate? Um, are they all over the country to where you know there might be more opportunity um, for them to not have to relocate? Yes, that is um, that is correct. Most of our sales opportunities are based off of region. So um, you will be you will be in charge of a specific area, a specific region. But um, our veteran sales, they come open like we just have one open in Tampa, Florida for the southeastern region. We have some in North Dakota. We have some in California. So it is regionally based. Um, but if you're not in that region and you apply for that job, then just know that the requirement is for you to relocate to that area. Um, and sometimes they'll say that, you know, just be located by an airport on the West Coast. So it makes it easy. But just know that you're in charge of the span of the West Coast. So. Perfect. That's a great opportunity for those who love to travel. So just knowing that there is travel requirements for some of those sales. Um, all right. So another question um, regarding the um, leadership programs. How you said it's very competitive. How many people get these positions? <laughs> Good question. Uh, it so it depends on the year. I can say last year there, I think it was 10, per, 10 people in the entire cohort. And that was a mix between MVLDP and EMVLDP. So it might've been like six and four for each program. So um, again, like I said, that's the reason it's so competitive is because they're bringing you in at a management level with not much experience in that industry. Awesome. Thank you for clarifying to temper some expectations for folks. Yeah. So look into it, but also look for direct hire. <laughs> right. And we definitely, you know, I push the programs because I think it's, I, I haven't seen anything like that before that capitalizes again on those transferable skills. Um, but I also push direct hiring because again, that's where the majority of our employees and veteran employees come in through um, that direct hire. So whether you see a job on LinkedIn or, you know, uh, Glassdoor, whatever it is, that's what we consider our direct hire program. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, and I'm being told Malvern is in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, some more questions. Um, so as obviously, you know, J&J is a big company and there's going to be some competition with these roles. Um, what pieces of advice do you have for these folks if they're going to apply for one of these positions, you know, one of the pathways, one of the direct hires, any tips for them to be successful in this application and interview process? I would say, so I'll start with the application process. May, please do not use a blanket resume for everything. Um, you want to make sure that you are tailoring your resume, again, to at least highlight whether it is the key responsibilities within that job description to show that, yep, I'm already doing that, or the required skills. Yes, I can do that, or I have done that. Um, so don't use a blanket resume. That is that is huge. Recruiters are reviewing resumes every day, hundreds of resumes. How will you make yours stand out? 
hit those key components that's in that job description. Um, when it comes to, and then of course, try to connect with me so I can at least try to, you know, give the recruiter a heads up. Hey, I've connected with this talent. They are really interested in J&J &J, and I think they would be a good fit and they meet all the requirements. So um, that, that would be a good thing to do prior to. Um, when it comes to interviewing, this is one of like interviewing for a corporate was so different for me. Um, so I love to pass on this, you know, a couple of nuggets, as they say, please make sure you are able to translate your military skills into corporate as far as I can do this. So if they're asking or if the job requires you to write code, for instance, um, make sure that you're allowing them or you're describing that, hey, it might not have been in the healthcare industry, but this is how what I do can relate to what you're asking me to do in this job that I'm preparing for or interviewing for, if that makes sense. Um, we use the STAR method. A lot of our interviews are behavioral based. So we use the STAR method. So make sure that you, when they ask you a question, you're able to tell the, the situation, the task, the action and the result. I've seen a lot of people not be able to tie in a result and they are passed over because of that. So make sure you understand one, what is a behavioral interview? And two, how do I relate? How am I able to talk about my experiences in that STAR method? I'm um, really big. So with behavioral interviews, I use the example of, tell me about a time where you had to deal with an external stakeholder that was challenging, right? You might not have had to deal, you're like, wait a minute, what's the stakeholder? What's this? What's that, right? Because it's entirely different terminology than what we use in the military. But really what they're trying to see with that, with that specific question is conflict management, right? How do you deal with challenging situations or people and still accomplish what it is that you need to accomplish? So think about the questions that they're asking and find, well, you can, you know, in a good answer, if I've like never had to deal with an external stakeholder, right? How many times have you guys worked in a joint environment? or just had to collaborate with, and I apologize, I'm very familiar with the Air Force because I did 23 years, but you know, you've had to collaborate with either finance and procurement and medical, right? Those are all external stakeholders because they're not part of your job. So just don't get so nervous and worked up about the question, you have it in you. Just take a minute, breathe, think about it, and then answer the question. Um, let's see what else with interviewing and setting yourself apart. Do your research, right? We've said, I've said the credo like five times since I've been on there, if not more. Know what the credo is if you're coming and not just with J&J, &J, with any company, right? Know what that mission is because they're going to ask you, how do you fit into that? And why, and understand why you're applying for the role. Yes, yeah, sometimes we apply for stuff just to get in the door. Okay, understand, but that shouldn't be the answer that you give them. You need to understand if they ask you, for instance, why are you interested in sales? I'm excited about, you know, having the opportunity to work closely with customers within J&J &J, in the credo. It talks about how important customers are to the company. And I want to have a direct impact on that. Just understand that you are just understand that do your research prior to the interview because those questions on why you're the best person know how your skill set fits into um, whatever the role is that you're applying for research is huge those that don't do the research is um, I always laugh I have someone that I asked about like oh tell me what part of the credo resonates most with you and they were like the what I was like oh okay <laughs> So definitely do your research. Hey, thank you for that. Um, that kind of hits home on some of the things that we talk with our students about. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, all right. I've got another question from the chat. So let's say there's a position. They've got a bachelor's degree, but maybe not enough experience as to what the, the job posting is, is listing. Um, is it a deal breaker? First of all, right. Is it kind of like a, you have to have both minimum 
no, don't pass go if you don't. And then also, okay, let's say they do get into a more entry level position. Can you talk about growing opportunities at J and J and if that's a possibility? Yes. So that's the good thing about um J and J and utilize using your veterans experience, right? But a lot of um hiring managers understand that you're not going to have specific industry experience, right? But you could be really good at finance. You could be really good at, you know, talent acquisitions as far as you might've been a recruiter in the military. So it really depends on the hiring manager on how much they are a stickler to those years of experience, which is why it is important. And I know my calendar gets bogged and sometimes I'm a little, it takes a while to respond because I have so many emails, but that is why it is so important to connect with my team. And it's only two of us, we're small but mighty, but um, it's really important to make those connections so we can put it out there that, hey, we have this candidate, they don't have the experience in or the, you know, years of experience in this area, but this is what they bring to the table. Please consider them. So it's almost, again, we're advocating for you. Um, now, if it's asking for like very specific, like clinical experience in this, then you have to have that. Though some things are not, they're not going to um, waive or uh, be flexible on. But other things we can definitely try to work with the recruiter who will in turn work with the hiring manager. As far as opportunities to grow within the company, another thing that I love about the company is they're plentiful. Um, we have one, they do offer tuition assistance. So if you want to go back um, to school or complete a higher degree, whatever it might be, they also offer, um, you know, depending on your job, you might be able to get, they have partnerships with certain um, organizations for certain certifications. So that's there as well. But we also have our internal development, uh, which we call J&J &J Learn, where they place you, you can request a mentor. Um, you can do, uh, we call it upskilling. So you, they have various uh, LinkedIn learning training opportunities. Anything, if you can think of it, is out there. Um, we also do things like, grow assignments or stretch assignments. Again, for me, uh, I liken it to try before you buy because you don't know again exactly what you're getting into. But say you are in TA, talent acquisition, and you are a sourcing partner um, and you want to go over and learn how to be a recruiter. You can do 20% as a sourcer for your day and the rest, your remaining of the day, you can work with the recruiter to learn about their job. So there are definitely opportunities to grow. Um, they actually encourage it. I, I, it was so strange to me. The I had been in this role for six months and it is a requirement that you stay within a role for at least 18 months before you move. But I had been in this role for six months and my manager was already asking me, well, what do you think you want to do next. I'm still learning this, but I uh, definitely appreciate you moving me um, along. So it makes you feel valued and um, and wanted within the community or within the company to not only grow professionally, but personally as well, because they push you for everything. Awesome. Thank you. I mean, that was great advice. So I guess some key takeaways apply whether so sometimes there's flexibility on the requirements so apply but the important part is they need to connect with you so networking is a huge piece of it um, and talking with you more about that and getting connected to um, that hiring manager but knowing maybe you got to get your foot in the door mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity for growth that's a great thing about a huge company like j and j there's places to go um, yes. for for that mobility. Um, perfect. So I do have um, another question from someone in the chat. Uh, I've been told I'm being told there is an assessment of some sort for some of the positions. Um, are or is there an assessment type as part of the application or interview process? Maybe in some of the manufacturing roles, maintenance, tech, that kind of stuff. Are there assessments um, as part of the process? Yes, there are, and um, but it is definitely role specific. So, um, for instance, some of the assessments, if you are in IT, they might ask you to code on the spot um, if that's what you're going for. There are there is an assessment for 
manufacturing, but I will definitely find out. I'm not familiar with that one specifically, um, but I can find out more information if that, if whoever has that question, if they want to connect with me, um, I can find out, but I'll definitely email you back, Katie, as well with that information to pass it on. Um, and then we have our just regular assessments as far as there's, it's not a pass or fail. It is more so just an assessment to figure out your leadership strengths as well as areas of improvement. But that doesn't necessarily mean like, oh, I took this Hogan X assessment. I'm not going to get the job. It just means, okay, this is where they're going to focus. Um, mostly when they ask you if you make it to the next round of interviews, because there's always multiple round of interview rounds of interviews. So please know and understand that it is, it is not a one interview and you're done. Um, <laughs> you have multiple rounds, but yes, there are assessments associated with some, um, with some roles and positions. Thank you for clarifying. And I've got one more question. This might bring us to the end of our time. Um, but let's say some of our folks, because obviously we've got a lot of transitioning military who are attending today. Um, what if they choose to go guard or reserve? How and or if and how does j, &J support those who want to continue to serve in that part-time capacity? Good question. We actually just updated our benefits um, to include your time away. So they the program or J and J offers benefits to guard and reserve so that they can go serve and still come back to their job. Um, very supportive, like I said, of the veteran community. So that isn't even like an issue when it comes to applying for jobs or being within the company. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I a follow up question. I know we've got, we're almost out of time, but I guess um, some folks may not want to put you know that they're a veteran. They're they don't want to list that, but it sounds like they need to go ahead and put that on their application. They need to make it very well known. Uh, same with, I'm guessing, military spouses. Is that the same kind of mentality, having it on their resume, make it known? Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I was going to speak on that. That's a good question and a good statement because, um, especially in my role as a sourcer, I am looking for military talent or military connected talent. So. I always say, update your LinkedIn profile, put it on there somewhere, because those are keywords that I source for. Um, veteran, Air Force, Army, Marines, you know, all the branches of service, military spouse, all of those things are how we create our sourcing um, slate to pass on to recruiters. So if you haven't identified um, yourself with any of that information, then we, as a military talent sourcer, it'll probably get overlooked. So you definitely want to. It is not a requirement for us. And once you're in the company, you self-identify um, and you can put your your veteran status or guard or reserve status on there. But I will tell you, you know, that is definitely one thing that you want to add to if you have LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile or um, resume. Thank you, Ebony. This has been very informative. Um, and I'm sure asked, you know, answered a lot of the questions that folks, they were probably going to ask you in the, in the follow up. So I'm glad we will take care of it now. But um, we're just about out of time. Is there any final last words that you'd like to uh, tell our participants before we close it out? I would just say, um, you know, I'll speak specifically on J and J, and then I'll say really quick about my transition. But J and J, the comp, the company is awesome. The culture, it was a very easy fit um, for me to transition from military to J and J. I came in, and we were still remote. I didn't meet my team until maybe three months after I started working um, as far as physically meeting my team. And not once did I ever feel like I wasn't part of the team. And that is the culture across the board. So if you ever speak with someone in j, &J you'll get the same, um, you'll, they'll have the same sentiment as far as why working for J&J. &J. The culture is awesome. The benefits are great. Um, and it, the again, they encourage the upward mobility. Um, so just know that, and as a veteran, don't ever count, or military connected, don't ever count yourself out, right? Don't say, oh, well, I don't have this experience. Try, put it out there. You know, um, a lot of times we sell ourselves, we sell ourselves short because we feel like 
we don't know about a specific industry, but you bring so many transferable skills to the table that um, it's undeniable when it, like I said, I think the military breeds leaders. It's just what we do, what, what we come out with. And in that, you have so many skills that you don't even think about that you have that companies are looking for. So again, just don't sell yourself short. Awesome. Thank you, Ebony. We greatly appreciate you taking the time today to talk with all of our military connected folks. Um, it was great learning more about Johnson Johnson. So a couple next steps for everyone. A poll did get launched. Please make sure you fill it out before you head out for the day. A uh, couple key reminders. Get on J&J's website. Book time on Ebony's calendar. These are important, important things um, that you can do to help uh, push yourself forward in that application process. Make sure you follow Johnson Johnson on LinkedIn, follow Here's Make America, connect with Ebony on LinkedIn, and then join us next week. We will continue the show March 13th at three o'clock with Manitowoc, another manufacturing company. So thank you all for joining us today. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week. Thank you all. Have a good day.